da cool cats welcome or welcome back to my channel it has been a minute but lo and behold here is a, a video so if you are new here hello my name is malaya and if it wasn't obvious by the title alone today we are going to be discussing the house of dragon fashion influences so there is lots to cover go ahead and grab your negroni with prosecco in it and let's get into the video If you were wondering who is responsible for the costume design of House of the Dragon, look no further than the award-winning costume designer Janie Tamai. Her work definitely speaks for itself as she's had an amazing repertoire of costume design projects, some of which include not one, not two, but all six of the Harry Potter films along with Black Widow, Judy, and two James Bond films, Skyfall and Spectre. And for somebody that actually didn't end up watching Game of Thrones, the mom did a hell of a good job bringing to life all these characters with all her amazing costume designs. With free reign over what the cast and crew were going to wear, Tamime made over 5,000 costumes. And where she got her inspiration, you might ask? Well, let me tell you that. Mime look for her references mainly from the medieval times as she drew a lot of her inspiration from the renaissance period. She took it a step further by also looking towards the Byzantines for visual referencing quoting that Byzantine was rich enough. It had a sort of decadence. Now, for a little historical context, the Byzantine Empire endured for some 1,123 years from the dedication of Constantinople in 330 until its fall to the Ottomans in 1453. In Jennifer Ball's thesis and dissertation, Byzantine Dress, to the Byzantines, fashion was not only a way of distinguishing class among its people, but it was considered as a form of high art. The clothing was considered among the finest in the European and Mediterranean world, and according to her, the styles they wore permeated borders becoming the envy of western courts. Fashion was a high priority in their society and it bleeded its way through many of their citizens. As a courtier in the Byzantine court, these courtiers would change up to five times within a single day's festival. Soldiers who also fought on the borderlands wore silk-lined clothes to battle, protecting themselves against arrows better than woven wool. In the coronation of Rhaenyra as the official heir of the Seven Kingdoms, Tamim got her inspiration for that look from the big gold halos and ancient mosaics seen within the Byzantine churches. As you can see in this painting depicting Empress Theodora and her court, she is seen wearing a draped royal purple chalamus with an embroidered dress, but most importantly, she has this decadent maniacus collar and her crowning stem which is closely related to what Rhaenyra was seen wearing. As for Damon's costumes, she drew inspiration from the samurai of ancient Japan as well as the kilts of Scottish culture. These traditional pieces of skirt-like pants are called the hakama and are worn over a kimono which made their first appearance in the Kojiki written in 712 which is Japan's oldest historical record. And the symbolic meaning of the hakama is expressed within the five folds in the skirt which represent the five virtues of Bishudo which include benevolence, justice, courtesy, wisdom, and sincerity. As for the more practical reason, they obviously did so to hide their footwork from their enemy's legs. As for the kilt, according to Caitlin Larissa Bedker's thesis and dissertation, the kilt is a knee-length dress of pleated tartan or traditionally in the Highlands of Scotland. Initially, the kilt was adopted by the Highlanders of Scotland, referring to men within the northern part of Scotland, which was geographically and culturally separate from the lowland region which was in the southern part of Scotland. However, eventually their lowlander counterparts evolved to start wearing these pieces as well. And the material of the kilt is made of a tartan fabric which is a Scottish specific textile and is a stripe and checkered pattern 
known as a set creating a variety of patterns running across and lengthwise. The kilt mainly served its functional purpose by protecting against the elements and was a staple piece within the men's wardrobes. Clearly, the way that Tamim crafted the costumes for the men worked out as this really allowed all the actors to really get into character. With any story, fictional or non-fictional, the audience can really escape into the world the showrunners have been able to create, especially through the garments the character wear that reveals so much about the type of world that they're living in. The costume designer of any production must have a keen awareness and a close eye over how they're going to create a realistic world in which the characters can really be brought to life. And Tamim took a very detailed approach to make sure the textile and the patterns were carefully picked to not only be visually pleasing but revealed a set of stories that express the characteristics and personalities of each person. She wanted the garments to appear lived in and real and not costume like at all and through this she really wanted to characterize the power each individual had and how their personalities would eventually grow throughout the course of the show whether it be through the types of fabrics silhouettes jewelry pieces these all take into account a character's identity class and status and wealth this is done especially with the use of different hues and colors to signify the different family and houses as well as where their political allegiance stand and the most prominent group is obviously the Targaryens as well as the High Towers. The House of Dragons is very unique in the fact that it depicts the events that took place 200 years before the events of Game of Thrones happened. We can really get a feel for the might of the Targaryens as they ruled over Westeros with black, red, and gold being the colors that represent this family. These colors symbolize the blood, death sex and a fire commonly associated with the Targaryen clan. We can see there is a lot of dragon motif in the Targaryens since this is their sigil and this comes in varying forms such as dragon scales, dragon wings, or the symbol of the three-headed dragon. Their outfits also consist of the scarlet encrusted gemstones, pretty much similar to the stone of ruby, signifying their wealth and status as members of this clan. When it comes to Rhaenyra, one of the first dresses we see her in is this beautiful, albeit simple, gold dress with red accents. The jewelry she wears upon initial meeting was also an intentional detail by Tamai. She was not able to wear such ornate jewelry at first. From this first depiction, we could see that she's wearing these small maroon or scarlet gem drop earrings in gold. However, this would change as Rhaenyra is named heir to the Iron Throne. But then her jewelry would consist of these three tiny pearls clustered above a gold disc with a pear set in the center as well as this pear-shaped pearl dangling below. This is vastly different from what she's worn before representing her transition into her new role of power. And for Damon, his costumes are more appropriate like that of a warrior. Obviously, he is wearing the long skirts reminiscent of the hakama as well as the kilts with the upper portion of his body uh, protected by bits of armor on them seeing as if he's ready to clock anybody that comes his way. And for his tourney armor, he is wearing a extravagant hunky piece of armor with his helmet being carved and shaped into that of a dragon with red gems for eyes and the wings stretching out appearing to look both menacing but also still so fascinating and alternatively when he's in battle he is not so showman like anymore which makes sense given the context he switches out his pieces for a tougher and practical look seeing that he is obviously going to war and it is a life or death situation. For Viserys, his outfits are what you would expect a king to wear, but what I found to be my own personal favorite was the last outfit he wore before his imminent demise. Even in the decline of his health, they really made sure that King Viserys was absolutely dripped out to the max. I mean, the golden mask, the robe, and the crown it was an entrance and his mask really reminds me of the mask that the Phantom of the Opera wore but obviously more elevated and fitting 
for somebody who's a king. Now, as for the king's right-hand woman, oh yes, Queen Allison herself. When we lay eyes on Allison for the first time, I don't think any of us really had any idea of the direction where her character would go. From first impressions, her character seemed very unassuming and I personally didn't know yet the progression at which she would have. But oh brother, was I wrong? And I would probably have to argue that out of all the characters we see, Allison has had the most significant and remarkable character evolutions in terms of how much her wardrobe changed. In episode 1, she plays a supporting character with her role being Rainier's best friend and she wears a sky blue linen gown with a gathered bec chiffon shift underneath and this would signify her status as a member of the court and this way of dress however would quickly change as she was soon coaxed by her father Otto Hightower into seducing the king soon after Emma's death. In their ploy, Otto made sure to put Allison in a more sophisticated, mature look advising her to wear one of her late mother's dresses. Allison wearing her mom's dress makes it seem as though she's much older than she actually appears to be. So in this dress, she is wearing a much deeper shade of blue with cutout panels starting from her neckline stretching all the way towards her sleeve. Her jewelry has a bit of an edge to it as well as she pairs it with a bolder piece. In comparison to the first outfit we saw her in, she wears a dainty gold necklace composed of five flowers and pearl drop earrings. Alternatively, in this look, she accessorized with a spike chain necklace and these triangular cluster drop stud earring. As Allison starts to integrate herself more into the Targaryen family by wedding Viserys as well as birthing his children, we start seeing this shift in her color palette as she starts wearing more red signifying her allegiance to the Targaryen and marrying into such a prestigious position. One should expect Allison to certainly dress the part. As her new position as queen, new resources would be more readily available to her for her disposal of more finer fabrics, richer jewelry, in order to present herself to the realm as the ever so elegant Queen Allison to obviously assert her newfound status and power. So in the unreleased scene of Allison's wedding to Viserys, which we sadly did not get to see, hoping that they'll release it. She wears a traditional white wedding dress but with a little bit of a Targaryen twist to it. We see there's a red inner lining within her sleeve and smacked right dab in the middle of the dress. The Targaryen sigil appears and connecting from that there are dragon-like wings shooting out from within her shoulders as well. And as a final touch, she is also wearing a crown with spikes at the top with red and white pearls at the ends of it. And another major highlight in the evolution of Allison's character that really exemplified this transitionary phase was during her infamous walk into the banquet scene as she wore all green, making a statement towards the whole court. Not only did she arrive wearing all green, but she also happened to arrive late for her daughter-in-law's banquet, as well as interrupting Viserys during the middle of his speech, and pretty much only choosing to acknowledge her family. But talk about a statement, eh? And of course, we are able to comprehend the deeper meaning behind this with Laris explaining to his brother that the beacon on the high tower glows green when the old town called its banner to war. This color would remain present in the queen's wardrobe as we see her many years later, still representing her house by choosing to include green in pretty much most of her fashion choices as she's an older woman. And Allison has definitely changed significantly throughout the course of the show, not only in her personality, but we see this translate into her style as well. All in all, Tim Mime did a fantastic job taking lead on what the characters of the House of the Dragon crew and cast were to wear. Not only did she really put special care into the central characters of the show, but the secondary characters of the show as well were being accounted for. For Missaria, Tim Mime also made sure to showcase her status within Westeros as an outsider by using silver in her accessory, being that she is neither a Westerosi native 
hydrated nor oil so as we can see every little bit of detail was certainly taken into consideration for Tamai. that is it for today's video thank you guys so much for watching and thank you so much for being here bye